you're, you're playing so good in the first half, then the def was it the defensive assault or was it just the offense stalling and going cold? Uh, I, th I think our offense kind of got stagnant. Um, we had had some success. Like if, if you you know you do the math, 40 points in the first half equates to 80 in the second. And we, we haven't been scoring points. So first half we did enough things right to, to be a danger at the offensive end. And those things right were attacking the basket. We got some transition baskets. But the mentality was more aggressive. The third quarter, even though we talked about it at halftime, we, we became a bit passive. Uh, we, we fell in love a little bit with the three-point shot. And, um, the shots aren't falling, you know, and, and missed free throws again in the third quarter. So, uh, you know, you have dry, empty possessions, dry possessions, and, and they kind of build up, and then you see the lead all of a sudden, it's 10, it's 12, and, and a young team starts to, you know, try to figure things out on their own, and, uh, you know, it just kind of goes from bad to worse, and, and uh, that's why I took two timeouts, which I never do, ever. Um, but, you know, I was proud of the guys that they rallied in the fourth and, and uh, you know, didn't let it get away to something embarrassing. In spite of the effort, you know, sometimes you just get judged on the score. Uh, and, you know, to be able to cut it back from 20, you know, and, and to get it where it was at the end in, in competitive, competitive possessions, that's what we want. And, uh, so, you know, there's positives to take away from it. Uh, and, you know, we go from there. Which when you're a young team, you're playing really well in the first half, and you go in the halftime break, and suddenly you start the second half after, you know, maybe you go a little colder than you were in the second quarter. Is it harder when you're younger compared to when you have a few more years of experience to maintain that level of energy and intensity? That could be a fair statement. Uh, you know, I've coached a lot of teams, so I probably should have an answer to that, but I really don't. You know, teams are, are funny. They all have their own psychology. And, Young teams have, you know, generally things that are typical of young teams and veteran teams have things that are, but it can be a mix and match, you know. So this team hasn't had a good third quarter yet. So it's something we've got to um, get into the psychology of that because it isn't the ability, it isn't the tactics. Um, for some reason, you know, we even came out, which you never see an Ateneo team do, we came out with five minutes on the clock so that they could warm up and the cheerleaders were still out there. So, um, you know, that was by intent. You know, we're trying to get that halftime warm up to get that mentality back. So we're still searching. So I don't really know the answer to your question. In line with that, Coach, you guys arrived at the arena a little later than usual yeah. today. But did that something, have something to do with the traffic? Or? Yeah, there was traffic issue. And, uh, you know, we had our normal routine. First game that we've had in Moa this year, we had mass, which we always do, and, and then we did. Fortunately, we did our pre-game preparation at Mora before we came here. So even though we were late, we were still not psychologically late. Um, but it does change the dynamic. But we came out quite pretty well in the beginning, so I don't think it was a factor. Hi, coach. You were heavily on today. So what's the game plan moving forward? Do you uh, just make sure Mike Phillips isn't allowed to play in every team. <laughs> Number one, just got to keep him eligible for LaSalle. And, uh, he's a monster. You know, he's a monster on the boards and, and he did a tremendous job. We had also prepared for the fact that LaSalle's guards have very good rebounding averages. Even in just a few games, they're showing that they commit their guards to the offensive boards. And if you don't run on them, you know, you're not going to punish them for that. So you better be effective on the boards. And we weren't, as you say. Um, and I just addressed it with the team. And I said, you remember back to February, March, and April, how much we emphasized boxing out and rebounding. And we never really seemed to get the reaction from them that we wanted. And now this is the reaction you don't want. You know, you don't want to give up 60 all the way. In the end, it's 53% offensive rebounding percentage for the South. So that means one out of every two shots. They got their own rebound, and that's hard to win. You give that up to a team. So what do we do going from here? You know, you can't condition people. That takes time. So we have to really put the pressure on them to make that that choice in the moment to focus on that, and, uh, and you know, treat it as a very important job. You have to do. You'll get some success, and some you won't.
coach one of the bright spots for Ate here today was Sean Tawarim's performance. So, can you talk about the top pros about his group with Ate Neo so far? Well, he's just, you know, he's just a, a good player that's getting better with experience. And, you know, he showed flashes last year and this year that his role is, you know, is more significant and he can score. Um, so, you know, I like to see what, what he's doing, but we want to see it consistently. We want to see Josh Lazaro repeat what he did in the last game. We want to see Drew Bongo get going because these guys have offensive capabilities. And until these guys start being consistent, it's going to be tough on Jared because the defenses are going to focus on him because they know his skill set. And until other players get the defensive attention off of Jared to some degree, it's going to cause problems for our the entirety of our offense. But I, you know, I have confidence in him. Josh has had a good game. Tonight, SD Sean had a good game. Um, Port showed a little bit in the last game, and you know, a little bit tonight. So, step by step, they're finding their way, and um, you know, we just we just got to get the, you know the win loss record on the rails now. You know, it was a it was a pretty brutal start to the to the season with the schedule we had, but that's the way it is. You got to play them sometime. Um, so it just doesn't look very good right now. It looks awful at 0 and 3. But uh, you know, we just believe that, that now we've got that stretch of the schedule out of the way. We've got a week to prepare for Adamson. So we have to do a really good job because Adamson showed what they're capable of today. Coach, in that week of preparation, will we see it? Will we be seeing any major changes, or do we stay still uh, patient with the process? Of Oh, you have to be patient with the process. You invest too, too much time into something you know will pay dividends and just don't know when it will pay dividends. I think the biggest change we'll see this week is we should get Chris back. Um, hopefully earlier in the week rather than later. Um, he's still got some soreness, but it's, it's responded well and he's got stability in the ankle. So hopefully, you know, that, that extra body, that extra veteran minutes uh, will pay dividends for us.